Hi, this is a quick review of the DSO-138 digital oscilloscope. This comes in kit form, uh, but you only have to solder the through hole parts, the SMD parts like uh, the MCU uh, and this op-amp and some SMD resistors are already soldered. I'm going to start this review with a verdict. This is pretty much useless as an oscilloscope. Its main problem is that it has a very small bandwidth, only 100 kilohertz. And uh, on top of that, uh, the software is uh, full of bugs. Uh, sometimes the trays will get stuck at the bottom of the screen, other times it won't trigger at all, and sometimes uh, it won't uh, make measurements. Okay, I'm going to put the screen in place and then power it up. It's booting now. And I'm going to put the probe. This is the included probe. It's just a BNC cable that ends in two alligator clips. And uh, I'm going to use the, the test post here. Uh, it outputs 1 kHz at 3.3 uh, volts. We can change uh, the coupling using this switch. Uh, now it's on DC coupling, AC coupling, and now ground coupling. Uh, we can change the sensitivity uh, of the Y axis. Uh, the minimum is uh, 10 millivolts per division and the maximum is 5 volts per division. Uh, so you can measure up to uh, 50 volts, the 10 divisions uh, from uh, bottom to top. By using the select button and the plus and minus buttons, we can uh, change uh, various settings. Uh, now uh, the time base is selected, so by pressing plus and minus we can switch the time base. Uh, this is the triggering mode, now it's on auto and uh, normal and single shot. This is for rising edge uh, triggering and, uh, oh, sorry. and this is for falling edge and uh, the next option is the trigger level. We can move it up and down, it's this arrow here. The next setting is the ground level. We can move uh, the ground point of the waveform up and down. And by holding the OK button for a couple of seconds, uh, the measurements uh, come up. Uh, but uh, for some weird reason, uh, we, uh, there's no frequency measurement on DC coupling. I have to switch it to AC coupling. So it's time to do some more tests. This is my Rigol DG1022 function generator. It currently produces uh, 1 kHz sine wave at uh, 5 volts peak to peak with uh, 0 uh, DC bias. And uh, this is my Rigol DS1052E oscilloscope. It is currently showing the sine wave generated by the function generator. And here is the DSO138. I'm feeding the same signal to both oscilloscopes. Now I'm going to increase the frequency gradually and see uh, when the, this oscilloscope is going to start distorting the waveform. So now it's 1 kilohertz. 3, 4, 5, okay, now it's on 5 kilohertz. I'm going to change the time base so we get the full signal. I'm going to increase the frequency more. 8, 9, 10 kilohertz. Twenty five kilohertz. Now the frequency is at twenty five kilohertz. Uh, we can see that the frequency is moving around uh, a little bit, and uh, there's some uh, jitter in the waveform. Uh, the volts peak-to-peak uh, -peak measurement is uh, near enough to five volts. 
And uh, here we can see on the proper oscilloscope that the waveform is perfectly steady, no problems whatsoever. I'm going to increase uh, the frequency more, now it's 40 kilohertz. Seventy kilohertz. Okay, that's the highest time base we can get. I'm going to increase it more. That's uh, ninety kilohertz. I think the jitter has increased now and the frequency is off by one and a half kilohertz. Now it's uh, 100 kilohertz. 110. One hundred and thirty. Now the waveform is uh, moving all over the place. It, it cannot uh, trigger properly. Let's go to one fifty. That's one fifty. Okay. Now it's. Uh, it's distorting a lot. This is 200 kilohertz, and for a reference, this is how it looks on the other oscilloscope. No problems at all. Okay, I'm going to increase it a little bit more. Let's go to 250. Okay. Now this looks like uh, amplitude uh, modulation. Let's have some more fun and increase it even more. Okay, now I'm at uh, 280, 280 kilohertz. Okay, 300 kilohertz. It's not showing anything correctly. Uh, neither the volt peak to peak measurement nor the frequency measurement is uh, anywhere near correct. Now I'm going to switch uh, to a square wave. Uh, the frequency is same as uh, before, 1 kilohertz. Amplitude same as before, 5 volts peak to peak and 0 volts uh, DC offset. And uh, this is what we get on this oscilloscope. And uh, this is what we get on that oscilloscope. I think my time stand probe is not pro properly compensated. And this is why this downward slope, uh, this would be uh, perfectly flat. I'm I will try to compensate it right now. This is the compensation capacitor. Okay, I will show the waveform of the camera. Okay, now I think it's perfectly flat. We saw previously that the, this oscilloscope is uh, starting to distort the waveform at uh, about 100-110 kHz. Now I'm at 1 kHz and like previously I will start increasing the frequency. This 2 kHz, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight. This is ten kilohertz. This is fifteen kilohertz. Twenty. 
So now even at the low frequency of just 15 kilohertz, we can see that uh, there's already a lot of distortion. Uh, the edges are not uh, uh, perpendicular, but they are kind of slanted. Uh, there are these horns here uh, overshooting, and uh, this uh, part here is not uh, a straight line, but it looks like there are many, many little wiggles. Okay, so I'm now going to increase the frequency more. Now that's uh, 25, 26 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz. Okay, the distortion now is becoming even worse. That's 50 kilohertz. Sixteen. Seventeen. That's uh, eighty. And this is one hundred. Now the waveform is so distorted that it looks like uh, a sine wave. It doesn't resemble in any way a square wave. And uh, for comparison, this is what I'm getting on my proper oscilloscope. Okay, we can ignore uh, this overshooting here. Uh, this is probably due to the improper termination of the connections here. Uh, but the rest of the waveform looks very nice. So previously we saw a massive distortion, even at very low frequencies like uh, 10 or 15 kilohertz. So why is that? To answer that, I'm going to use the FFT function of uh, this oscilloscope. According to theory, any waveform in the time domain, like this one, can be reconstructed using sine waves of different frequency and amplitude. So now I'm going to switch that to a sine wave and turn on the FFT function of the scope. And uh, this is what we get. Here the yellow line is amplitude versus uh, time and the purple line is amplitude uh, versus frequency. We have a single sine wave of uh, 100 kilohertz here, so we get a single peak in the FFT diagram. And uh, this is uh, 250 kilohertz per division. The division starts from here to here. And uh, we can see that the peak is uh, a little to the left from the middle of the division. Uh, the middle of the division is uh, 125 kilohertz, so this is 100 kilohertz. Ideally, if this was a perfect sine wave, we would get only a straight line here. Uh, but instead we are getting this uh, wedge-shaped uh, thing. This is because the sine wave is not perfect and there's uh, some higher and some lower frequency content. What's going to happen now if I switch from a sine wave to a square wave? A square wave is composed by the main frequency which is this, the 100 kilohertz, and the odd numbered harmonics. That is, we multiply the main frequency with the odd numbers, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. So the first peak here is the base frequency, 100 kilohertz. The next peak is uh, the base frequency times 3, so 300 kilohertz. The next one is times 5, 500 kilohertz, times 7, times 9, uh, times 11, and so on. So, in the case of the square pulse, there's a lot more than meets the eye, and uh, these peaks go on and on well into the megahertz region. Now we are into the, uh, the center is at uh, 5 megahertz, and it still keeps going on. But uh, this crappy little oscilloscope cannot show anything uh, beyond 150 kilohertz. So I'm going to emulate that effect by adding a digital filter on the channel 1. Uh, 
Uh, I have already set it to 150 kilohertz. It's a low pass filter, so anything above uh, 150 kilohertz will be filtered out. And now I'm going to turn it on. And now the square pulse uh, got converted to a sine wave. And this is because everything uh, beyond 150 kilohertz is uh, getting filtered out. I'm going to turn it off now. So now I'm going to switch the frequency to 10 kilohertz. This was when uh, we already had a lot of distortion on the other scope. I'm going to switch the filter on again. And now we are getting uh, this same uh, waveform with those horns uh, at the edges and this wiggly line here at the top. And I just realized that the filter, for whatever reason, uh, was set to 250 kilohertz, so I moved it back to 150. And now the effect is even more pronounced. And here on the frequency domain, we can see that only the main frequency and the seven of the harmonics are passing through the filter. If we turn the filter off, all the harmonics now pass and uh, the waveform is restored to square shape. So this uh, oscilloscope is pretty much just a toy. It's uh, going to distort badly anything that's not a perfect sine wave, even at very low frequencies. I hope you enjoyed this review and thank you for watching.